So this should be a pretty quick uh, demonstration on some basic color correction in Photoshop. So we're going to sit here inside of Photoshop real fast. I've already set up a scene and I have on the left hand side the original and on the right hand side the one that we're going to do the color correction or color changing for depending on how you want to look at the term. All right, so in class we demonstrated two different versions. We did one with a hue layer uh, to replace uh, selection and we did one with a hue and saturation uh, adjustment layer um, which allowed us to get a perfect color match instead of just using a color to uh, blending mode that color into that area. I'm going to show you both um, ways on this card here and then we'll be able to analyze the difference between those two. All right. So the first and easiest version is uh, creating a color layer. We can do either color fills based off of this or we can create uh, a full uh, color layer which is what we'll do here. So if I have a color selected let's say that I want to turn these orange and yellow stripes into these two colors of blue. All right. I'm going to select my color. I'm going to come over here to the filters and I'm going to create a solid color. All right. So that gives me this giant solid color. I'm going to say okay. And then because I'm already here, I'm just going to go ahead and select another color and create a second color mask. So another solid color here. So now I have two solid color layers. So over here, we can change that color if we choose by double clicking. It'll pull up our color picker and then we can come through and pick whatever color we'd like. Um, I'm going to stick with what we got. All right. I'm going to turn this guy off and this guy. I'm going to highlight. I'm going to say G. I'm just going to fill this mask with black for now so that we don't see the color on top. What we're going to do is highlight this dark orange and fill it with the darker red and then highlight this or select I should say make a selection of the lower um, the brighter yellow here and then use that brighter blue. All right. So there's a few ways that we can go about making this selection. We can do it with a magic wand. I would tell you not to do that. That's not very accurate. I intend to use the pen. So I'm going to hit P. Let's zoom in real fast here. Hit P and I'm going to make some quick selections. So I'm going to start down here on this bottom angle. And for the sake of time, I'm not going to spend gobs of time on this selection. Now, I'm going to hold down my Alt key and re-click that to remove that second handle so that it doesn't interfere. When you're coming around a curve like this, it's good to find the start of the curve. This particular one's pretty mild, but I'm still going to come to the center of the curve here. Like I said, I'm not going to spend a whole ton of time making these selections. In your work, you can spend a lot more time making sure that everything is a lot more accurate. All 
right. I'm going to come down here. Get up to this, I think. That'll work for that for now. Straight up to here. It's a kind of a complex curve. Yeah, that one's not going to work. Want to come. There. I always say I'm not going to be overly accurate, and then here I am spending more time than. I prefer. All right, so we have our selection from our pen tool. Now, once that pen tool um, outline is created or path is created, we come over to our paths area right here, which is in the same uh, section of tabs as your layers. Currently, this is called work path. We can name that by double clicking it. It'll open up a little window. It says save path. I'm going to call this well, attempt to call this. There we go. As it freezes on me, trying to type. Looks like we got bottom Tom <laughs> due to the computer freaking out. And I'm going to right click on this and say make a selection. Now it's going to ask me about feathering. I'm just going to say uh, zero pixels for now. We can make it more accurate later on. All right. Once I have that, I'm going to come over here, make sure that color fill is selected. I'm going to hit G for my um, bucket. <clears throat> I'm going to put white into that mask, into this selection. All right. Now, turn that entire area, that color blue that we were hoping for, which is nice. <clears throat> but it, it, we've lost all our detail. All right. So that means we need to change our blending mode. So we come over here where it says normal. I select the layer. And click on where it says normal. And I'm going to scroll on down towards the bottom. Now here at the bottom we have four blending modes. Each of these blending modes isolates one particular uh, channel of your color or what we refer to as color. Hue, saturation, color, and luminosity. So this is your H, S, and here is V. And then color, my understanding is it basically takes hue and saturation into account. All right in some form or fashion. We're going to use hue, like so, and then we end up with the hue we set or selected, not necessarily the values that we've selected, but the hue. All right. Now, in order to get this a little closer, we would probably come in and do some curves. But for right now, we're going to do exactly what we were doing inside of class. All right. So I'm just going to leave this be. And I'm going to do another um, calculation or another a selection on this top guy. All right, so I'm going to turn this back on. I'm going to hit Command D or Control D, depending on whether you're on the Mac or on your PC. I'm going to get rid of that selection right there. I'm going to grab my pen tool again. I'm going to make another quick selection. There.
notice that because I'm using the pen tool, I can continue on with a pretty complex selection. This is a three part selection, and then I can come back after and make that um, make that into a selection in my paths. Alright, I'm using the space bar in case you're wondering how I'm getting that hand to pop up so fast. I'm just holding space bar, it gives me my hand and I can drag this around. Helps that I'm in uh, full screen mode as well and zoomed in a touch. Alright. When you're using this pen tool, you just have to click and you're holding that left click to drag out that Bezier handle. If you've ever used Illustrator, it's the same there. If you haven't used Illustrator, then that comparison is uh, null and void. But at least in aiding your understanding of the tool. Nonetheless, we have our selection made. I'm going to come back over to paths. I'm going to click on this guy. I'm going to say, uh, well, I was going to rename it, so double click it. Here we go. Path one. I'm going to call this top. Okay. So there's my top selection. Let it think for a little bit. Right click on that, say make selection. Alright, the reason, by the way, that I'm naming these is if I don't name them, as soon as I start a new path, it'll get rid of the old path. Alright, it'll continue to replace it. So renaming them is the only way to save that path inside of your document. Alright, so I have that selection. I'm clicking on this color fill. Uh, mask right over here. I hit G, flip over to white, dump that in there, and come down, blending mode, hue. And there we go. Control D or Command D. I'll drop this onto the screen or fit it to the screen. And now we have. Uh, some approximation of what we've done in the first class. I've used these two colors here to change these two colors here. Now clearly, because we're only using the hue channel, we're not getting this real deep um, value here from this darker blue, nor are we getting the desaturation from the lighter colored blue, right? So we have to figure out a way to change that. Now we could come in and use a hue and saturation channel on top of these and play around until we matched or got close to the saturation and brightness of these two. So let me try that real fast. I'm going to hold alt in between here and clip this hue and saturation right to this color fill one. All right. So what we're going to do here, I'm not going to bother with the hue. We already have the hue that we wanted, but the saturation and the lightness aren't quite there. So I'm going to start off with the lightness because clearly this is a good bit darker. All right. So I'm going to pull this guy down. And you can see that it's not doing what we would hope that this would do. All right. Even if we change its blending modes, maybe we try and do a multiply, it's really not getting it there. And I've got the lightness all the way down. 
So what we're going to have to do instead, if we want to do a direct color match, is start off with a hue and saturation layer. And then create essentially a paint chip that finds the perfect average and then do that hue and saturation layer to this vehicle inside of this mask. All right, so I'm gonna get rid of this guy. Since you can see it's not really doing anything. <clears throat> I'm gonna put these inside of a group. I'm gonna call this method one. All right, and I'm going to come down here and I'm going to create a new layer. I'm going to call this paint chip. Bottom. And paint chip top. All right, so what I'm going to do is come down here to my layer. I'm going to turn that, these other methods off. I'm going to find myself an area that looks like it's a good average color. I would say this looks pretty decent, and then this looks pretty decent as well for the yellow. Not a lot of highlights like this, not a lot of shadows like this, so it's a fairly unadulterated um, fairly pure section of color. All right, so I'm gonna hit L. L is my lasso tool. I'm just gonna make a quick selection like that. Let's say Command C or Control C. I'm gonna click on my paint chip bottom, say Control V. So I've pasted this chunk into that bottom piece. I'm gonna do the same thing over here. I'm gonna find this little area. I'm gonna say Control C. I'm on the wrong layer. There we go. Control C. Paint chip top. Control V. And there we go. So now I have both of these dudes selected. All right. Now, in order to select these active pixels inside of paint chip bottom. I'm going to hold command. Notice that it gives me that little hand with the dotted line around it. I'm going to click that and that gives me my dancing ants, a new selection around the active pixels inside of paint chip bottom. I'm going to do this in order to come up to filter and do an average. So I've got filter, I'm going to come down to blur, I'm going to come to average. All right, so notice that that cleaned up that selection quite a bit, and it gave me one pure color. I'm going to do the same thing over here. Command B, and then hold Command and click on this guy. Filter, average, boom. If you don't do the selection, it's going to average in all of these transparent um, pixels as well. And this isn't going to turn out uh, the way you want. All right. So, D. So now we can see that we have these two nice colors. All right. So now I'm going to come over here. I'm going to grab this paint chip bottom. We said we wanted this to be dark blue. And hit V. I'm just going to grab that paint chip. I'm going to roll it down. And oops, we're behind everything, right? Not the big, not a big deal. Take these guys. We're going to stick these above everything. There we go. So we've got our paint chip bottom over top of my color palettes. And I'm going to select paint chip top and grab this guy and pull that dude over top of that. <clears throat> so now I'm going to start off. I'm just going to turn this guy off now. I'm going to select my paint chip bottom. And I'm going to come down here and add a hue and saturation layer. 
all right, or filter. I'm going to clip it to this paint chip. That's hold alt, left click, and clip it to that layer lower. All right. Now, what we need to do is try to match this color with the blue. So I'm going to come down here. I'm going to click this hand and then click on my paint chip. So notice it gives me this dropper. That's going to sample that new averaged color, which is going to give me these brackets right here, which is telling me that uh, the color that we change, notice when I drag this slider now, it's going to be changing things that are within the realm of that paint chip's um, saturation value and hue, mostly hue. actually all heal. So now what I need to do is find hue and saturation that are similar to this, all right? And lightness. I'm going to start off with my hue. I'm going to pull this guy around until I find something that's pretty decent blue. Let's take this lightness down as well as the saturation because we can tell that it's definitely a desaturated color. Let me hit Z here, zoom on in. We're really close already. It looks like this paint chip or the original paint swatch I should say has a touch more green hue to it than this. So I'm going to take this guy I'm going to try to slide this around. Oh, we're starting to get real close. We just need to get a little darker, I believe. A little too dark. Let's play with that saturation. Maybe up. That's incredibly close. There it is, right there. All right. So we have that matched. Now, what I want to do is apply this to the car. All right, a few really easy ways to go about that. You'll notice that this has its own mask. Currently, this is clipped to our paint swatch. I'm going to unclip that from the swatch. Now, this is going to change because I've unclipped it from that swatch. The colors for everything below it. We don't necessarily want that. I'm going to take this guy and drag it down here below my method one stuff. I don't care about it changing this back. What I am going to do is come up here in a method one. Remember we had these paint or these uh, paint swatches that we created and they have a mask inside of them, right? Well, I'm going to grab the mask off of color fill one because that's the one we used for the, the bottom. I'll grab that, left click, I'm going to hold Alt as well, and drag that onto there. Now, it's going to say, do you want to replace the layer mask? I'm going to say yes. Boom. As soon as I do that, I get all of my other stuff back if I change out uh, the colors here, which is pretty nice. So, you'll notice that the colors here from the original swatch are an identical match. All right. We can do the exact same thing for the other one. So I turn this dude back on. I'm going to click on that guy. I don't need that orange color swatch any longer. Paint chip bottom. So I'm going to come over here to paint chip top. I'm going to create yet another hue and saturation layer. So click here, hue and saturation. Lovely. Hold Alt right in between these two layers. Clip that to the paint chip top. I'm going to zoom in on this dude. And clip my hand. Select my paint swatch. Notice it gives me a different range now, more towards the yellows. 
and I start to slide this guy in the hue slider around until I start feeling something that's more cyan. Okay, we can't get there from there, so we got to go the other direction. Okay, this is pretty desaturated, so we're going to bring this guy down. Once in a while, you're running into one of these that's kind of crazy, where it just doesn't want doesn't want to find your color for you. Keep playing here. I feel like for some reason in class I had a hard time finding or getting Photoshop to find this one as well. more lightness and it's really close we'll call that good enough for demonstration purposes all right again I'm gonna unclip it's gonna change everything inside my scene that's fine. I'm going to take this dude, I'm going to pull it down here, and I'm going to take and hold Alt and select Color Fill 2's mask and drop that on there. Replace the mask. Yes. Take that out of that folder. There we go. All right. Now, there's a little bit of craziness going on here with this particular area because it's changing some of these blues to green. Now that has to do with that range that we selected. All right. So what we need to do is come in and play around with that a little bit.
All right. So in order to take and correct a little bit more, I've come in and I've turned on that method one as an added backup for any little niggling areas that may have gotten crazy. Which turns out pretty nice. And we don't need that. So the big difference here, let me change these two. Put those into a group. Call that method type here. Two. This is the original, as we can see on the left. Method one gave us only our hues. Method two gave us a color match, but um, based on our range, it got a little strange in a few areas. And then a com combination of those two, method one and method two, with method one being on top of method two, it helped to smooth out any of those oddities uh, inside of that area. So a really nice way to go about color correcting Anything that you're dealing with. All right. I hope this answers a large number of the questions that we had in class. All right.